Apic Petroleum Company Nigerian PLC has been operating on oil exploration for export and local seas. The results for the accounting year end 31st December 2010 for the company showed opening stock they've given us just like that. Okay. So they've given us the allowable some expenses incurred by the company. So the company total export of crude oil during the year was two million barrels, which was not less than equivalent of two forty per barrel and so on. Then you also notice that they've given us information too. The amount of seven point five million was expended on rent, including non productive rent of thirty point five million for accommodation, stuff like that. They've also give us the list of how the expenses were is being spent. So then you compute the petroleum profit tax liability of APIC PLC for 2010 year of assessment. Good day viewers. Yeah. So based on this illustration, the difference between this illustration and the first illustration is that um, the previous illustration we solved the question from the scratch that is from the crude oil sales then everything stuff like that but this illustration we can see that the account has already been prepared by the company but we as a tax consultant or as a tax authority or as a taxman we have to look at the account and make necessary adjustments where the company has made some errors or mistakes or some fraudulent acts like tax evasion or avoidance. So we, we as a tax consultant have to detect that. So that's what this question is all about. And based on this question, we are going to start from our profit before tax simply because the company has already calculated its own sales and everything and its expenses, its own expenses which it feels that is allowable for tax purpose but we as an accountant we have to look into that and to make the necessary adjustment so we are starting from profit before tax based on this question now the profit before tax in this question is um 49 million 200,000 That's the profit before tax. Now, we have to make some necessary adjustments. Like, what are those income that the company did not, did not declare and it is allowable and it is, an allowable, it, is, it is a taxable income? What are those income? The other thing is, did they follow the normal tax rule? Like, adding uh, opening stock and deducting closing stock, did they follow the normal tax rule? And they follow the normal disallowed expenses and allowable expenses principle. Did they allow all the expenses they are supposed to allow and did they disallow the expenses they are expected to disallow? Hope they did not uh, put disallowed expenses among those allowable expenses. That's what we have to confirm. It's just like we are doing confirmation. We are cross-checking like we are auditing it. So, now, if you look at this question, if you look at information one, you'll be working this based on the information. The company total export of crude oil during the year was 2 million barrels, which was not less than the equivalent of 240 per barrels at the main international trading export center. Now, since they've given us that, that is export sales. Remember that in the question they've given us one export sales based on the in the computation they've given us an, an export sales so we have to cross check is this is the export sales in, uh, based on what the com company calculated is it the same thing as the export sales based on what we we are going to calculate based on the additional information given so let's go export sales. Now, the one I computed 
you are going to multiply the 2 million barrels by 240 naira. That's 480 million. But based on this question, based on what the company calculated, the company only declared 200 million. You can see. 200 million. You can see that there is a shortfall of 280 million. So the 280 million is a taxable income. So that's a shortfall. So the company did not declare it. So we have to add it back to our profit. Add back taxable income. Export sales. That's 280 million. Now, another thing we have to look at here is um, stock adjustment. We call something stock adjustment in a uh, petroleum profit tax. Remember, in the previous illustration and in the volume one of this video lecture, I said closing stock will be added to the production cost and transportation cost while opening stock will be deducted. You can see. So we have to confirm if this is true. We have to confirm if that is what the company followed. If that is what the company followed. Now if you look at this question, you see that the company did not even take into consideration opening stock at all. The company... Now, let me throw more light on this. Let me throw more light on this. If you notice, sales plus sales, opening stock, well, let's say closing stock, Based on the tax rule, production cost, transportation cost, and opening stock. It's still the same thing as it's still the same thing as this sales, opening stock. production cost transportation cost and closing stock they are still the same thing this one here and this one here they are still the same thing are you getting it now so but based on this question you will see that the company deducted only closing stock, which is very good, which is what they should have done. But they failed to um, take into consideration the value of our opening stock. And remember, opening stock should have been added to your sales. Definitely, the opening stock, as since the opening stock was not added to sales. They have understated the income. Are you getting it now? So they have understated the income to the turn of 5,000 Naira. So let's show that in the workings. I'll call that stock adjustment. Now, you see that there are on sales in this question. In this question, export 
and local. Export is their own, they declared 200 million. Local is 30 million. Remember, I said you can add opening stock. You can add opening stock to sales. Or you deduct opening stock from the cost. It's still the same thing. Are you getting it now? So, opening stock. Which is 5 million. Sorry. You will add it. You will add it. That's 235 million. Then closing stock. You have to deduct closing stock, which is 10 million. Making 225. Compared to what? So, the company only reported 220,000. So you deduct it, so definitely there's a shortfall of 5,000, that is understatement of income. So we have to add back that income that has been understated. You have to add it back to so stock adjustment. That's 5 million Naira. The next thing is if there is, if there are income that are not taxable for tax purpose, for example, income from ocean going oil tanker is not allowable is not it's, it's a non-taxable income for tax purpose assuming it has been included or profit on disposal of fixed assets remember it is not a taxable income assuming it has been included in the computation of this uh, profit before tax we have to deduct it because it has been added before so we have to deduct it if there are non-taxable income but for the purpose of this illustration there is nothing of such. So the next thing is our salary expenses. So there are some expenses that are liable for tax purpose, and there are some expenses that are disallowed. Part of which I've given you in my in the volume one of this um, video lecture. So in deriving at this profit before tax, the company would have deducted some expenses which are liable and some which are not liable for tax purpose so we shall be looking at them one after the other only those ones that are disallowed will be considered will be added back because it has been deducted before arriving at this profit before tax so we have to add it back before because it would have understated the income so the first one here is factor cost. Factor cost is an allowable expenses. Carriages and flights is an allowable expenses. Salaries are allowable. Consumable, allowable. Rent is seven thousand, seven million five hundred thousand. Now, if you look at information two, they said the amount of seven million five hundred thousand expended on rent, that is the rent above in the in the expenses. Include a non productive rent of 3,500,000 and payment on accommodation for staff stated as follows. Now, remember, I said productive rent and non productive rent are liable expenses for tax purposes, but there is something about non productive rent which are non productive the rent that the company that is liable for tax purposes must not exceed. 100% of the basic salary for example if you are if you are not basic salary is 500,000 the rent that the company is expected to incur on your behalf must not exceed that 500,000 any excess will be taxable are you getting it now so now let's confirm what I'm saying here for the purpose of this you see that they said the directors earn salary of 500,000 per annum each why the senior manager and geologist are on basic salary of 200,000 naira per annum now if you look at the particulars of the of the directors they said two building for two building for directors at 120,000 each 
that's 240,000 in Lagos. Definitely, each director is 120,000. You can see that it does not exceed their 500,000 annual salary. Are you getting it? An annual payment. You can see definitely that one is an allowable expenses. The six flat for the senior manager, eight flat for, for oil geologists. The senior manager, that's for six flat, that's 600,000 divided by six, that's 100,000. You can see that it does not exceed their basic salary. Same thing as the oil geologist. 960 divided by 8. 120. You can see that it does not exceed their basic salary 200,000. Definitely all the rents are allowable expenses for tax purpose. Are you getting me now? So the next thing is interest on loan. Interest on loan is an liable expenses for tax purpose. Depreciation, everyone knows that depreciation is not an allowable expenses. Instead, the government grant capital allowance. So 50,000 or 50 million. Stamp duty on the venture. Stamp duty on the venture is an allowable expenses. Donations to political party is not an allowable expenses. To political party. That's 1,500,000. Contribution to staff provident fund is an allowable expenses. Royalty on custom duties is an allowable expenses. So that's all. So let's look at some other information. Whether So even in that information, they, even, they also said royalty and uh, information theory, they said royalty and custom duties of 45 million, that is the 45 million in the expenses above, um, include royalty on local disposal and custom are uh, all allowable expenses. Now, having said that, the next thing is the allowable expenses. Remember, the only allowable expenses here that was not included is the education tax. So you click education tax. So the next thing for us to compute now is the education tax. So in order to compute um, the education tax, I give us some format. So let's compute education tax now. So remember, we have adjusted profits before education tax. So we are going to add all this. This and all this. So adjusted profit before education tax is eighty five million seven hundred thousand. Now the next thing is whether there is loss relief. There are losses that are to be relieved or not. So Based on this question, there are no losses to be relieved. There is no balancing charge. So loss relief, nothing. Balancing charge, I don't have. So it's still 385,700. So the next thing is, allocation tax will be 2 over 102 of 385. 700 
So, so the education tax is um, seven. So this is um adjusted profit. Since there is no loss relief, it's still the same thing as your accessible profit. There's no loss relief and balancing charge. So to confirm whether your result is correct, let's do two percent. So if you do two percent of this, it's going to give us this result back. You can see. So, the next thing is computation of capital allowance. Remember, our capital allowance is the lower of A, total capital allowance. And B eighty five per cent of accessible profits less one seventy per cent of investment allowance. So the next thing for us to do now is to calculate our capital allowance so that we get our investment allowance. As Do not forget the capital allowance. We have you can put your annual allowance, twenty percent. Now, based on this question, we have from qualifying capital expenditure plant. The plant was purchased in two thousand and eight, and remember we are computing for two thousand and ten. So that's from 2008 to 2010, 8, 9, 10, that's 3 years. So remember it is 20%. 20% 20 of um, 45 million. Well, that would be 9 million. Motor vehicle. Motor vehicle is not an allowable expenses. So we won't include motor vehicle because it is not... I am sorry, it is not a qualifying capital expenditure. Motor vehicle is not a QC, it's not a qualifying capital expenditure. So it won't be included. The next one we have pipeline and storage tanks. So that's it was bought in 2007. 7, 8, 9, 10, that's four years. That's 20% or so of 25 million. We have building. 2008, that's third year. So that's um, 18 million. That's 20% of 18 million. That should be. Three point six million.
the total everything so we have 14 this 17 we have um now before that sorry before that before the addition of this the question also says that during the year plant and machinery plant and equipment imported worth 20 million was located offshore at between 100 meters to 200 meters depth of conventional water shelf so they bought plant and equipment They bought it in 2010, that is in the current year, so first year. 20% of 20 million naira. So that will be 4 million. Making a total of um, 21 million 600,000. Now remember, you have to compute investment allowance because plant and machinery was purchased in the year that we are computing for in that same 2010 are you getting it now in that same 2010 remember this one is 2008 this is 2010 so investment allowance investment allowance is um 100 meters to 200 meters depth that's 15 percent so fifteen percent of 20 million that's three million uh, We have twenty four million six hundred. So here we have twenty four million six hundred thousand. So eighty five percent of three seventy eight of this. That's three twenty one. One one six 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 seven approximately. The one seventy percent of investment allowance is thirty million. Now, so this is the lowest. So you are going to deduct this from this. So this is chargeable profit. Chargeable profit, you can call it chargeable or taxable profit. So So, the tax liability now, PPT, 85% of 375, if you have MOU, you deduct it.
we have MOU with the dot. Your education tax. Your education tax seven million five six two seven four five. So you can see how simple it is.